Almost there, setting it up. So we'll, we'll let the music play. Yes, sir. Welcome everybody, welcome everybody coming in. Welcome, welcome, we going to take a little time to uh, let everybody come on up in this jump. everybody welcome everybody welcome sad sad greetings uh, and salutations greetings greetings hello Blessings. my sister how are you <laughs> i am giving thanks for life how are you you're giving thanks for life también <laughs> good to see you lazy k what's up, my star? what's up little sis how are you I'm um, all right. What's up? Russ, Sam. How you, how you doing? How you doing? What's up, hey, teacher? Hey, hey. <laughs> Give thanks. Give thanks. I mean, I thank y'all for being in the space, man. Today is a is a powerful, powerful day for a multitude of reasons, you know? And I think and I think the theme of born again really speaks to that, you know, for everybody, you know, whether you practice. Christianity, whether you look at the stars and the sun, all like it's just the whole thing, man. You know, today 
we got a lot to reason on. But most importantly, we're going to see this fire, fire video, you know. And for those of y'all out there watching, got a lot of familiar faces in this video and a lot of familiar places. And I think that I'm not going to speak too much about it. I, I just know that as a as a native Washingtonian, you know, it's good just just really seeing material that has familiar faces and familiar places in it, you know. So exactly, exactly. Love DC Go Go and like and the Afro Go Go, you know, genre, like not subgenre, but the genre of Afro, you know, go go. Like, you know, it's just powerful in itself. But I'm gonna stop there. Uh what I do want to do is I want to open the floor up you know, to, to the members of Crank Congo, because Crank Congo is a collective, you know, tonight is all about y'all. I just really want the people out there to know about Crank Congo uh, and know, you know, how Crank Congo came about, what's its mission, and what we can expect here tonight. Yeah, so first of all, um, I want to apologize. Um, for some reason, this... Um, this Zoom is not being shared on the Crank Blue Congo page. It's being shared on the Swamp Guinea page. Um, and I must have had a glitch there. I don't know what happened. Um, but I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to um, I'm going to share it. Um, yeah, I don't know what happened here uh technology brought tech technology because uh the people can't go to the website and um just redirect them on. yeah 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 so um so we can we can continue to you talk. can also I share it in the group that, that you created for the event so anyone going there they can find it in three places yeah let's do that Okay, so I will do that. Let, let, let's talk about Crank Congo, yo. You know, um, you know, Gogo -Go as a genre, you know, is DC born. And, and like what I respect about Crank Congo is, you know, the affirmation of our Africanness and just how that reverberates, you know, through the beat. Um, I, I'm not going to lie to you, like it was only less than a decade ago when I was, when I really got hip to the African roots of Gogo, -Go, you know? And I think that's a very powerful concept that we need to touch on more of, you know, I would really like one of y'all to really speak about that, you know, in terms of how like that inspires, you know, what you do as a part of the group. Well, you know, I, I received uh, uh, some beats from Matthew that Matthew just, just did like 10, great go-go beats you know it's almost like uh 10 vibes he sent to me and of drum beats different flavors of go-go and when i heard it myself i was like man you know matt you are covering all of the entire diaspora of go-go drumming <laughs> in these in these tracks man we really should try and do something with them in terms of trying to um influence or present our gogo -go in a style that comes from where we come from which is the area i'm from anacostia washington dc respect uh, and uh that part of the anacostia river along martin luther king all the way down to through east capitol street man has got a vibe i don't know why so much gogo -go music has come out of that little radius I don't know where the rhythms come from that seem so natural to all of us, but they seem to be coming across these waves from the Anacostia River onto our shores because we all live like within a mile from that very shore. So two things, you know, one thing I think we realize that this music comes from a deeper place, uh, an historic place that has been presented in the past. And we would like to be part of something that honors our ancestors, all of our styles of music that we've dis we've played and discovered, but specifically the people of Washington, DC and combine that with our African attitude. You know? Yeah. Anybody else would like to add something to that? I appreciate you, Baba. Thank you so much for that. 
Yeah, I was um, so I was too busy kind of rustling around trying to trying to get um, get us posted up on the on those other pages. So, um, can you just repeat the question for me? So, oh, yeah, no doubt. Properly. Yeah, no doubt. Um, you know, just wanted to learn more about Crank Congo and that and that connection to Africa through the Gogo Sound. You know, why mm -hmm. is it important that we make that connection, and how is this group? you know, very important in doing that. So adding to, to what Lazy said, um, you know, we, we, we recognize that the African presence here in the nation's capital is, is a very strong presence as we know the history. Um, and we look at, we look at the numbers, we looked at, we look at the, the African uh, majority that has been in existence since probably um, late 17, early 1800s. Uh, we pretty much built this city, you know, um, we built its infrastructure. So we have a very strong presence here and we, we've always had a, a strong presence here, here since that, that time. And, um, you know, we feel that it's, that it's just right to, to honor and to highlight that which is us or part of us. Um, there's so many different things that have come out of our culture here, our subculture, some of the things that we created, um, some of the things that we, we built that are major contributions to, um, to the global art world, to the global political world, to the global uh social world you know we actually have a contribution in that and when we have a story and um we only wish to share our story there are many stories there are, there are several narratives here and we are just that that one platform or that that one uh portal that's that's sharing our story and our foundation is afro gogo -Go roots because um you know gogo -Go being DC's foundation in terms of rhythm and, and, and beat and culture, um, you know, that, that pretty much bred us, you know, we came up um, as Gogo -Go was sort of um, entering the world as, as it was forming and it, as it was sort of like making a presence and we came up through that and was, was very much a part of it. Gogo -Go being, um, considered as a subgenre of funk music. But what's ironic about all of that is, um, you know, a large majority of our, our, our people that were brought to the Western Hemisphere came from the region of the Congo. A lot of us are the Bantus, the Bambadas. And a word like funk in and of itself, uh, it means um, to sweat or it means earthy. You know, and so funk, the word funk even carries a lot of weight. Gogo -go being sort of like a subgenre from that, in, a, in addition to other, other elements of, um, of, of music that's uh, assembled throughout the diaspora, sort of makes it what it is. We recognize that. Um, we just want to share our stories with the global community in terms of uh, who we are, in terms of our, the DNA, the makeup of our culture, because many people don't know. And um, yeah, we just we just want to share that story. You yeah, know, we have art too. Yeah. Oh yeah. You know, we yeah. are we are a people too. So I think it's yeah. part of the grounding force to show that it, as a mirror to each other that we count. Um, Absolutely. We, we are. We we create so it's, yep. it's an extension Absolutely. and it's an extension to all of our people. That's right. That's right. That's right. Mama Isla, please, you have the floor. <laughs> yes, um, they have said it well. It also is for the young people who are listening to music. The music is creating a, a power and an energy, and what Crank Le Congo is doing is, is redirecting that energy to really know yourself because gogo -go music the music itself we all know that music no matter where you come from you know the call the call and response of the african drum however yeah. sometimes lyrically 
our music is leading our youth into some spaces that they can't deal with. So what Crank Congo is doing is uplifting the vibration. Um, and that's what I appreciate love about it. You know, I grew up in the city. I was born at Howard Hospital, Howard University Hospital. Um, so from Lee Joy Park to Deanwood to Anacostia, we've lived in pretty much, I mean, even you know, all four quadrants of the city growing up and my parents as well. Um, and then growing up, um, I had some choices to make. I could either go with this set of youth or I could go with this set of youth. This set of youth, I was gonna get in trouble, you know? And so what we're trying to do is give you, give our youth an option, you know? And um, yeah, the music speaks for itself. Sometimes words can't even really, yeah. the music speaks for itself. It's telling yeah. the stories so that they can start yeah. to, you know, Sankofa and then they're gonna yeah. find some information that they didn't know was there. That's yeah, deep. absolutely. Yeah, there's a there's a lot of historical reference, and yeah. and what we sing, what we talk about. Um, you know, even one of the songs that Lazy does on the album, um, it's a song called "You Need Love," hmm. and it's a uh, it's a it's a go go version, a go goized version of. Um, of a Muddy Waters song that was actually taken from Muddy Waters and covered by uh, a few rock bands. And the song ended up making a bedigga digga digga dillion dollars. Mm. Okay. And Muddy Waters from, you know, a sharecropper from, from Mississippi um, being the creator of that music and you know, he was never really even able to reap the benefits of that music. Muddy died when I guess his estate uh, was able to, oh, I don't even know if they, if it was a lawsuit involved. I think that the people that made a dig a dig a billion dollars off of it decided one day that they were going to do a good deed and give give some money back or something like that. But never in his lifetime. But never in his lifetime, right. The reward of this influence. And right. so one of, the, of what we're doing too is to re uh, imagining our connection to our dead ancestors. Absolutely. And refashioning their music. Yeah. And putting it before a new audience. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But still at the same time, um, just giving the cultural honor to those that came before us, like the Muddy Waters, the people that you know, inspired us to play the blues and, and things of that nature. And, um, you know, I remember when Lazy kind of brought it to the attention, like he told you earlier, he uh, he he got a recording of like several beats because I made uh, I made a, a I made about 30 beats because go go is not just one beat. It's so so many evolutions of it. It's different, different rhythms. And uh, he heard he heard this one particular rhythm and he was like i'm gonna take that and and do something with it and he he cre he put uh, uh the chords and the strumming and everything of um you need love with the rhythm and came back and i was like oh my goodness that's fire and he said he said to me yeah they took it for muddy now i want to take it back <laughs> That's right. <laughs> he said, no, I'll take it back. No, it's, it's reclaiming because I personally believe that things are about remembering who you are. Sometimes we forget, sometimes we lose, and we're off on the wrong trail. What we're all trying to get to is remembering our crown. Mm -hmm. So so I want to touch on that real quick, and uh, hopefully we can bring Mama Isla in as well. Like, How does that translate to what's happening within the whole family, you know, sort of forgetting who we are, you know, because it affects the adults. But what about the youth? And then what happens with the dynamics within the family? Well, I think little sister illustrated, she started it right off the top because what we're saying is that, you know, we see you needing to make a choice out there. And all of those choices don't always look very positive. Some of them are not gonna always be attractive. So which way do you go? And if you don't have another way to go, then you're kind of stuck down the line. And I let the sister sort of expound upon how that spreads out in so many ways with our <laughs> to, to our parents, you know? Yeah, I mean, you know, um, cycles of abuse 
are cycles of dysfunction, I want to say, are happening since we were interrupted as Africans and brought here through the Middle Passage. We've been, we've had cycles of dysfunction. And so, um, example in my family, my mother was a teenage mom. I was a teenage mom. And then my awakening said that I'm going to do everything in my power to stop that cycle of dysfunction. Um, and there's so many girls who grew up in the inner city who have that same story. Mm. Their grandmother is in their 40s. You know? Um, so your family is everything. I mean, that's your first community. And um, there's always some forces that are trying to break us apart. Yeah. Even yeah. when we become awakened and our family doesn't want to hear it, and they yeah. think that, oh God, here they come again with that African yeah. stuff. Yeah, yeah, no. ooh, ooh, chuka, 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 chuka. yeah, yeah. I have an auntie that does that to me every time. You still playing that ooh, chuka, 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 chuka music? Exactly. Oh, wow. Yeah. You know, they have all kinds of things, and it just shows you know, when we reach a level where we can be patient with our people, it just shows the level of dysfunction, the level of ignorance, even yeah. in the best of us, we love them dearly. But some of the things that um, just this, just the generation of the 60s, that generation we look up to, that's the Black Power Movement, right. the Black Panthers, but mm -hmm. many of them were highly affected by the propaganda and by the fear of losing their lives. And they completely just walked away from all that. It's like, what, Africa, what? What yeah, are you yeah, talking yeah. about? We're in yeah, America, exactly. you know? Yeah. So, you know, um, where we have the opportunity through music is not to necessarily lecture them, but to let them hear it in a more pleasant way. Yeah. But it's still the same teachings. It's the same teachings you're teaching in the classroom, Rasem. It's the same right. teachings you're teaching, Matt, in the classroom through yeah. the drum, Lazy yeah. K through the instruments. And we're just yeah. trying to find different ways and means to, you know, deal with pieces of our dysfunction in a way that's palatable and maybe in a way that will last longer. The yeah, music absolutely. does that. Absolutely. Well said. Mm -hmm. Well mm -hmm. said. Mm -hmm. Uh. I got one more question, but um, do you guys want to get to it with the video, or you know, should I ask this last question? No, let's let you let's let's talk a little more, and then we can you know, then we can yeah. we can pull it in. Okay. Yeah, yeah, I, yeah I, I you know, y'all really piquing my interest with this reasoning here. Like, I really want to speak about the music itself, you know, because he and she who feel it know, right? So. We're, we're, we're providing music as a platform, you know, as artists, would y'all mind speaking about the ease or the difficulty you find and not necessarily competing with other forces out there, but just being, you know, a unique genre that's in a sea of other genres that might have more mainstream play or might have more of an appeal to the low vibrating forces that want to keep us mired in destruction. Like, I, I, I'm i really curious about that, you know? Yeah, I mean, the fact that you even asked that question, it's like, you obviously may or may not know that that's, that's a very real thing, you know? Um, you know, it's, it's, it's unfortunate because we're coming from a small place and we're all musicians that play in other genres. The three of us in particular, we also play in the reggae genre. And, um, you know, one of the things that we experience is that reggae, because it's solely based more on the, the social content, the spiritual content, the revolutionary content, you know, it, it's a unique way to, to bring us together. You know, um, Gogo is a little different with respect to Gogo, because Gogo, like many forms of New York uh, 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 sounds and rhythms that come out of New Orleans is a party music. And that's how it's defined. It's a party music. And, um, you know, and everybody's just, it's, it's a great music to get your groove on. You can have a good time, you can party um, and it's fun. Like, and I'm, I'm like the big, one of the biggest lovers of, of Go-Go. Love DC Go-Go. As a matter of fact, I want to shout out uh, Capri Mitchell and the folks over at Mitchcraft, um, 
uh, for for all of their apparel, you know, on GoGo, and 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 I definitely want to thank them for being supporters of Crank New Congo. You know, I truly believe in support those that support you. You know, and sometimes you support first. You just it's just naturally. So I want to give them uh, love DC GoGo and 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 um and Mitchcraft uh, a big shout out because they've been big supporters of us. And with that being said, that's just the, that's just it. Um, because we're coming from a small place, um, you know, there there are certain individuals, certain movements, certain entities out there within the the go go community that seem to be more focused on controlling uh, the narrative. Because now go go is becoming this hot commodity thing. Now it's like it's, it has its uh, political affiliations now and things like that. And, um, and, and we support, we've supported all of it, all of it, because this is, this is where we're coming from. Um, and so if there's anybody else out there that's doing anything positive, any other movements out there that's doing anything positive, whether it relates to Gogo or not, we're supporting it. You know, we have supported, supported it. And um, it's a little challenging just sort of having that energy being reciprocated. Um, for many reasons, I, I don't know. I can't really speculate or, or assume. Um, but my guess is that I think people, well, as far as the listeners are concerned, they just want their cereal to taste a certain way. You know, they don't want, don't put no bananas in my cereal, man. Don't be putting no... You know, they want their cereal to taste a certain way. And so with Crank Blue Congo, there's a lot, there's a huge element of the music is message driven. There's social references, there's historical references, um, you know, everything. Even with the song that Kay did, You Need Love, which is pretty much Muddy Waters. You know, it's a blues song, but he's talking to a woman, telling her what what's cracking, what's good, you know. But Kay metaphorically saw a different uh, message in that. And he wanted to, he wanted to dedicate that song. That song is a dedication to women and our sisters and our mothers and our queens out there. And so like, and I get it. And that's a, that's a, that's a space where he's coming from where, and how he's attaching that to the music. You need love, everybody needs love. And so, and I love that whole concept, but these, these are, are our messages. This is our story. We are, like I said, we're one story. There's, there's, you know, everybody has their story, but um, it's been, it's been a bit challenging, um, you know, getting that support from the very same community that, that we advocate for. You know what I'm saying? Our music is is for the people, by the people, of the people. You know what I mean? And so, um, so it's just, it's just taken a, a, a little while. We tend to get more support from from the global community outside um, the the indigenous, the Native American, Indian, and indigenous community have totally embraced it, embraced us, and adopted us with open arms. I think because of the song "Ghost of Anacostia," so they've completely aligned with us. In fact, they put us in positions where we get work. <laughs> You know what I'm saying? The woolly mammoth thing that was no, we, I think also most of all we have a pride in our uniqueness. Right. right? Because we're not trying to be uh fit into something that's preconceived already. You yeah. know, if you think about it, when you take an art, it is an art that's just like a person that's born this way. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, it's much like, I think, communicating with a person that says, hey, you don't have to follow the crowd because this is an example of being part of the crowd, but not following it. Right. You can be yourself within a crowd. Right. Yeah. And so it's reinforcing your own uniqueness, your own you -ness. Your you -ness. Your, your yeah. you -ness, because no politics can come in between your you -ness. Yeah, you know, and I think if anything, what this music is, as you put it, you know, how does it fit within all of the different more popular brands? You know, it's almost like telling a child, you know, um, you have to fit into this box, and no, no, you don't. Yeah, yeah, and that's the reason why it's called Afro Gogo -Go Roots music, 
because it's 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 truly taken on that root form. It has a large sort of folkloric presence to it. It's the reason why, you know, our, our first lady, you know, the sister Isla, you know, why she can come on and sing this beautiful song and she doesn't necessarily have to be expected to do church trills throughout the whole song. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? You know, we don't have to do that. Like it yeah. could be its own organic thing and it's all original music too, which is something that um, Go-Go Music doesn't often produce um, original. It does produce some original music, but it's mostly, you know, as we know, it's like that they'll take a cover song and flip it. And I and I actually love that. I'm a big fan of that. I love to hear go-go bands playing cover songs. I'm not one of those people that's like, oh, they should know. There's no really, there's no real right or wrong way to do this. So I actually love that. But we have a lot of um, you know, our whole body of work pretty much is, is original. You know, even with the Muddy Waters cover, it has an original arrangement to it. So um, you know, that's where we're coming from. And I don't know. Yeah, I think it makes it a little harder sometimes for uh, the 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 purists, the go go purists themselves to really accept that. Yeah, you know, sometimes. Yeah. Yeah. yeah DC is one of those places, though. Yeah. DC is one of those places. Everybody want you know. Yeah, it's, it's it's like, like a place. Yeah. Yeah, it's like a crabs in the barrel type of thing when, um, when you know, really there there has to be more unit like. Like you look at my, you look at Crank Blue Congo, you look at Ross Lidge in the deep band, you look at Harold Little, um, uh, groups like uh, Justice Lamont and the League Music Group, uh, uh, Black Alley. You know, these are groups that are considered as like go go hybrid groups, but they're coming with a slightly different type of twist. And they all have uh, different sub genre names to like so you got rego afro gogo -Go roots gogo -Go new wave black alley calls their music like gogo -Go house or Go -Go uh, hip hop or something like that yeah, yeah. yeah you got bounce beat right um that's my favorite type yeah so oh, you, have the <laughs> you have the different flavors and 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 i and i actually love that people are just being bold enough and courageous enough to create their own lanes because if you're trying, if you're trying to just say that you're strictly like go go, you're not gonna make it. You know, I'm sorry. That's just the reality. Like these people will chew you up and spit you out. You know, and you'll you'll be waiting forever trying to get that type of endorsement or that. And I'm just keeping it real. You know, um, and so what you have to do is you have to create your own lane. You know, and and keep it moving. And, and develop your liking, develop your following that way. And it's still all good. You can continue to support everybody else and, and just keep it moving, you know? And so that's what's, what's so, I think, interesting about this project after what, what Matt is saying here is that you put all of those influences in, brother, and you... Regrow it. That's why when this sister bring this brings the song idea around us, we get it immediately. Yeah, we get it immediately because yeah. it's an opportunity to be yeah. born again. It's not religion; it's the ability to relook at your situation in a different way. Yeah, yeah, and honoring the people around you because we're not your enemies. Yeah, we're the one that's causing you frustration. We yeah. live these same frustrations along with you. And so, um, and what my sister said too about, uh, you know, uh, us having that greater focus on the youth. I mean, um, I've been educating youth for a while as well. And I know that it's one of the things that's really important why, and I study different uh, types of drumming all throughout the diaspora, but here in DC, that's our language, you know, that's the language that we speak. And what I'm learning is that as time progressed, the younger generation, they tend to be a lot further removed from it. You know, it's, 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 it's weird because we grew up on it and then our children, you know, they got some of it because of us, but then there's this other generation that they don't, 
even though they're here in DC, they don't they don't really oh, have that's much real music. Right, trap. Everything is trap. They don't to yeah. them, go go is like it's like old head music. <laughs> well, that's old head music. That's yeah. like a how a trap, how a trapper would look at old school hip hop. Oh man, yeah. that's that old school hip hop, man. That's you know, and so it's the same way. And so as an educator, um, what I try to do is develop um a program where that 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 gogo component is a part of preserving that historical culture so that we won't lose it because before you know it this music is going to be in the hands of of some others and it's going to be really big i mean it's just read your history books you've seen it you've seen it happen before and and i don't knock anything but i'm just saying it's important that this music this culture is being maintained within um, the hearts and minds of our youth in, in this in our communities and in, in this culture. Because, if you don't claim it, you're going to lose it. Yeah, we're going to lose it. If we don't use it, we're going to lose it. I think I sort of see it happening right now with the, you know, of course, not, not to the level that has been the case with the other genres, but I know with them. It is happening now. Institutionalized go-go, you know, I, 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 I it, like you said, it is coming and, you know, um, when you were speaking earlier about the covers, uh, it's, it's interesting. I was interviewing a bounce beat Gogo artist. I'm not gonna say his name, but he made the same suggestion. He said, in turn, you know, for Gogo to blow up or to get beyond the beltway, you know, artists are going to have to start writing original songs. You know, and, and, and I know who you're talking about, and that's my man. I know exactly yeah, who you're talking yeah, about yeah. because he did the panel with us before. I think if that's who you're talking about, uh. Not that brother, um, okay. but okay. And yeah, another brother from the uh, not too who not the brother who lives not too far from him. Like um, okay, but, but that brother, this brother, he's been doing pretty well. But he made the suggestion about like in terms of like how to monetize in the industry, uh, things that artists are going to have to do in terms of like really, I guess like getting the whole infrastructure together because you know right now it's like. From my vantage point, maybe y'all can chime in. I'm hoping y'all can chime in. You know, as far as like institutionally, you know, it, it's, it, it seems like GoGo with the popularity that it's gotten or the or the hot or, or the spotlight that it's gotten over the last two or three years is like it's trying to catch up institutionally to build, you know, this infrastructure where people can get paid, you know, more often, where people can, you know, I guess travel wherever you know and really get stuff done and i guess covid kind of interrupted all of that so you know oftentimes i get kind of curious about you know where is it going you know now that now that it's getting so much attention you know i i, I think that the ball is really in dc's court but like y'all said you know this there's a mentality here about who's the top dog who has control over the narrative? Who can get there first? Right, right, right. Exactly. Yeah. That's that's what it is, and and um, you know, and we we can't really get caught up in all of that yeah. because that has nothing to do with us. No. We we just we're we're a bunch of hippies over here on the side telling our story, and like, and and that and that's really that. Um, but on the business platform, you know, mm -hmm. especially when you're talking about how music is sold today, and I would say to younger people today who are, who don't have former industry knowledge, there's no need to go back in time to understand something, how something was done if you're starting in these times. You know, I think because we don't, if we can backtrack for a second, you know, the music industry is not in Washington, DC. Right. It's never been, a music business hub no, it's we don't have here. multiple record labels okay so what you know traditionally has been with the music industry is that you get a booking agent so that you can tour and you have a record label so that you can record and your money is coming in from both streams now what you have the ability to do is self-distribute mm -hmm. without a middleman so if you have recorded something at the very least, if it's someone else's song, you own that sound recording, you own that master. Mm -hmm. So how I would like to see uh, Go-Go Music keep growing is in its knowledge 
of how to make money with it. And yeah. how you make money with it is the same way everybody else makes money with anything on social media today. Mm -hmm. Okay. Right. So it's charging for appearance. It's, uh, it's, it's uh, monthly charges for super fans who will get uh, information that no other fans will get. And it's that monetization and it's that starting from the bottom up, you would be surprised when you set it up. That's right. What and how much people will contribute to your dream. So this thing says keep dreaming because there is opportunity. Yep. And it's not only done one certain way or through only one set of people. You know, you design your dream and you That's make right. it happen. You design your dream. Yep. Very well said, brother. Sis Isla, uh, if you don't mind, because I know we've reasoned a couple times and you say, you know, correct me if I'm wrong, that you go wherever, you know, the spirit takes you in terms of producing music and just putting stuff out there. So, like, I'm, I'm very curious to hear your whole take on, uh, you know, just where the sound is going and how, you know, it should be monetized if at all, you know? Well, um, I think that when it comes down to Google -Go Music, Matt and Lazy K would be more expert than me. Um, at a very young age, I, um, as I grew, started to grow into my cultural self, I've been doing reggae music since I've been a teenager. And I kind of have not been engaged in the Google music because what I have to talk about is not party music. <laughs> <laughs> and it would be a buzzkill for people. Um, so I would say as an artist, I don't think that people in Washington DC or wherever they're born should be limited to say that because you come, you were born someplace, this is what you should be doing. Hmm. I think that it's important to allow artists to blossom and not be bound by right. any and of those art. things. Yeah. Um, but I, the, let the experts speak. So sometimes I just have to listen and take notes. Understood. And Understood. I also don't do music for the same reason no, that everyone own. does music. So yeah. in all of this, the, it's, there's space for everything. There's space for the party music. There's space for the gospel music. There's space right. for the cultural music. You know, in my playlist, there's all kind of music. Uh, I just am in a certain lane that has many, many, you know, avenues that I can go in. Um, so I'm. I would say that if it wasn't for Matt doing the Afro Gogo -Go Roots vibes. Um, I probably wouldn't be on a go-go song because who's going to call Isla to come talk about going back to Africa or, you know. <laughs> well, let me just say this. Let me just say this. I, I do have an advantage because as a musician first, I play with many different artists. So I play and I'm the drummer for the Isla Vibes band. Okay, mm -hmm. I'm a drummer and percussion with Lazy K and, and his thing. So all of the all of the artists that is involved in this whole Crank Blue Congo makeup, the family, the Crank Blue Congo family, everybody ha has their own thing. And I'm involved in their things separately enough to enough to have that vision where, you know what, I want to bring these spirits together because I know they would work. You know how sometimes when you have a party and you want to invite everybody, but you can't because you know, some, oh, yeah. you know, certain individuals, they just going to come and they're going to muck that thing up, man. And they're going to, yeah. they're going to cause that. They're going to bring Pepe Le Pew all the way with us. <laughs> Think up the whole vibe. So you have to be really strategic in how you kind of put people together. And um, these individuals are our family. Many of us know each other because we already cross connect. Like with Isla, both Lazy K and I have played, um, we backed her several times. So we have this cross, co cross connect, so it's a, it's a family. And I knew that every individual involved was a person that no matter what their religion was or what their spiritual road was or whatever, whatever, they all subscribe to a oneness. Yeah. They all subscribe to this, this very oneness that is Crank Blue Congo. 
you know, and me being a basketball player, you know, I don't necessarily always want to get out there on the court having a stacked squad, so to speak. Like, to <laughs> me, I got a stacked squad. You know yeah. what I'm saying? My sack squad might not come on the court and every everybody's rocking Jordans. Because that's the thing. You go on the court and you ain't wearing Jordans. People are going to look at you like, uh, let me pick somebody else. They don't even know right. you got game. Right. They just don't pick you because you ain't got Jordans on. And so for me, it's like, like I said before, I know we don't have singers that are in our group that's doing these church trills or anything like that. I, I don't care about that. We are Afro Go-Go Roots. That's, that's, that's our, that's our defining line. And so everybody, all the persons are involved that are, are in alignment with that. And that's what makes it what it is. And, and that's what's really, really important. And people on the outside, they don't know that. I know this, they don't know it, but, um, you know, Crank Blue Congo is a, is a gold mine. Yeah. And it, it's, it, and it's we're a gold mine. to the global Exactly. Community. Exactly. You know, exactly. That, it's it's like I, I think you know Matt put it well. It's like our version or what have you, and that's why I think you know it appeals to a world music. So if you, you know if you were to go to a record store, all right, and some record stores still exist, and you wanted to find Crank Blue Congo music, what section do you think you'd find us in? Anybody can think I would hope world music. Yes. <laughs> you find yeah. us in the world music section. Yeah. Not funk, not R&B, not rap, not rock. World music. That's where you'll find us. Because world music is not just confined to any artist that's from the continent or from Brazil or from D the Dominican Republic or no. We as people that were born on this land, but mm -hmm. with that African connection, African connection, we play a major contribution to this whole uh, world of, of music. We play a major contribution in that. No, I'm not Jamaican, but I still belong to the world community. <laughs> right, right. <laughs> so, like, um, and so we want to we want to assert that we want to assert that I grew up in D.C. You couldn't pay me to read a book when I was coming up because I was always yeah. into like sports and, you know, at some time. Yeah, I wasn't really books. What's a book, man? You know? Yeah. And it wasn't until I started listening to, um, you know, the Fela and Ikulapu Kutis and the, and the Bob Mali and the Whalers and the Yusuf Endor and the Salif Kieta and the Miriam Makiba and the Huma Sakelas and all of these people. It wasn't until I started listening to these people that I started going to the libraries, checking out books on these said subjects that these guys and sisters were talking about in their songs. So I would, the song would be my introduction. And then I would want to further investigate exactly what it is that they're talking about. So right. now you got a guy like me who doesn't read books is coming out of the library, checking out like stacks and stacks of books to further my knowledge base on where these people were coming from. And so as Afro Go Go Roots, we only hope and pray to have that very same impact on the global community as did with Bob Marley and the Whalers or Fela or all of these artists have had on us. We want to be a contributor to this, this, this whole thing, this whole story as well as, as they are. Yeah. And being from here and telling our story, because a lot of people I've had, we've had the opportunities to travel abroad and I meet people and they don't know that Chocolate City, DC exists. They don't have a clue. They look at your skin color like you from where, what? Right. They, they, don't, they don't know DC is that. They think DC is like some rum -ta -tum -ta -tum -tum, rum -ta -tum. Yeah. It's like federal, you know, they, they don't know that. And then when you start educating these people on, on this culture, they're like blown away, man. Oh yeah, man, I put mumble sauce on my chicken, man, or my vegetables and, you know, okay. this is how we walk. We talk like this every day, shawty, every day. Everything, this is, this is, this right here, see this right here? This is junk. 
I'm trying to get that junk. That's a junk. Exactly. And so just like in Jamaica where they have patois or different places where they have their own vernacular, we have our own vernacular too. So New York, every every other place. And so all I'm saying is that we play a part in this as well. And all we're trying to do is to, um, in addition to everything else, is just to share this with the global community so that they can have a little more knowledge on who we are as a culture, as a group of people. That's the reason why you have songs about Marion Barry, Mayor for Life, Petey Green, uh, the Ghost of Anacostia about the indigenous people from here. I mean, you have songs that's referencing uh, all of these things because this is a huge makeup of who we are as a as a culture, and we're and sharing like, it. And like yeah. that, you know, I think your story, Sis Isla's story, especially, really speaks to the theme of born again. You know, just you know, hearing y'all talk, you know, about. And it speaks to the power of music and just allowing y'all first to express yourself and second to learn from it to make you want to learn some more. Right. Uh, before we transition into the video, you know, I, I think the audience has to hear the story about how the song came together, you know. Okay. Uh, the, story, the story that y'all told me, you know, I, I, I think they really need to hear about that synergy. I'll let my sister start first and then we can chime on in after that. So. Well... <laughs> I think you're a very good storyteller. You're a griot, Matt. It's just because I talk too much. <laughs> it's just natural. And you'd use the drum to talk as well. So it's just natural. You do that. Um, well, you know, I think that Matt reminds me of the big brother that I never had. I'm the oldest of four siblings and they're all boys. I'm the only girl. And because of that, Matt came to the table with a with a vibe. It's like, you know what, sis, I got your back. We gonna make some music, and he, and he came able to play roots reggae music, which is, you know, that's that's the genre of music that um, I would say the label is there. I personally don't label music, but reggae roots reggae music is the one genre I think that really turn my life around yeah and he was able to come to the table and play that music but at the same time overstand that me being born in dc that i had some connection, connection. to some of the same things that he's connected to yeah and so when he pulled out the the beat the the gogo -go beat yeah. I was like, whoa, <laughs> I could really never expect someone to come to a rehearsal for Roots Reggae Music, <laughs> take one of my songs that's already being, um, you know, <laughs> and then play it and and not, the, the, I don't know how to put it in words, but to play the song in a go-go beat, but right. not change the vibration Right. of the song to something you know like okay we just gonna party and i hear what you're saying that was it was that was special to me so um and i did kind of laugh at like oh yeah 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 yeah, do that. yeah. You know? yeah. but i didn't yeah. expect that he was gonna say okay we're going to the studio i've already recorded oh, horns yeah. and i've recorded <laughs> this and i'm what? yeah yeah <laughs> so yeah. for me it's kind of like opening a gift that I didn't expect was, yeah, was she here. had no clue. It's all organic. None of this was like, oh, we're gonna form a group and we're gonna do this and we're gonna do that. It was more so, look, we're taking this song and we're gonna produce it. Just show up and sing your lyrics. Well, I got I mean, the rest. <laughs> you you were already a part of that vision, you know. You already and I heard this song and and like you said, because of you know, we have a very similar road. You know what I mean? I, for those of you that don't know, I'm a badass reggae musician. I'm a badass reggae drummer and percussionist. I'm bragging, but it's true. <laughs> Gotta own and it. There's, um, there's a large community of us that are born here in DC. Maybe not so much of a large community, but there's a few of us. Ross Ledge is, is among us too, that grew up here but at somewhere along the, the, the road, we, we found that Rasta Liberty and we learned from it. And, you know, some of us kind of went, you know, we had different, uh, different roads that we took from it, but it, it, was, it was something that 
that really taught us a lot. And so, and it's another way of how we all connected. And so, um, you know, just the fact that my sister is, is, is doing this, this music that's all about teaching and, and revolution and, and, and spiritual uh, um, enlightenment and all that, but she's from DC. So she also can reference Gogo because she knew about it. And I'm like, perfect. That's the spirit that I want. That's the vision. That's that's the spirit. It, it can't be no other way. And this song, Born Again, which he's talking about in the song, oh my God, I'm like, that's the catalyst for this entire movement right here. That's it. That's it. And and then I went to because 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 K K was there with me from the from day one. Like when we were like building these songs, when I, I first got my little task cam recorder. K was coming over like every day with his guitar and we were in there recording and just building stuff and playing around. And, and he was there from the jump. And when it came time around to record Born Again, he was all over it. So he does the um, he does the keyboard parts on the on, on the uh, on the course and all of the guitar licks. He's playing all of that um, co 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 producer. Basically, yeah, it's co-produced on Born Again. So, I mean, the two of us just single-handedly, like, just kind of like, you know, really knock that out and, and build it. We built it. And I will never forget that process. You know, it was a very, uh, very good, good time, us building that and creating that, you know. And then over time, we were able to get the uh, the bass player and and uh, and Alan, the keyboard player, uh, Nala Shabam, who played with piano for the legendary Jackie McLean, who's like bebop jazz pianist. So he came in and gave it a whole other other thing, and that's when you hear the solo. And this, so there's so many different elements to this. You know, you got the jazz element. Frankie Addison, our my brother, my big brother and, and horn player, he came in and arranged the whole horn lines and just had the whole tune because we did the song first without the horns and then Frankie came in and he stacked the uh the horn arrangements just on all 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 of, he played soprano sax tenor sax and alto sax and he stacked the horn lines with all of his saxes and that was mm -hmm. before I brought in the trumpet player the trombone player and Frankie came in and da -da -da -da. <laughs> when I heard the song, I remember stopping by to visit you, Matt, and you gave me the CD, and I just, I was speechless. The musicianship, the level of detail to, I love live music, yeah. and it, it, it was, I was speechless. I mean, like I was overwhelmed and I mean, I'm still overwhelmed. I'm still just here like, wow, you know, um, to have an idea and someone else just bring that musical piece and I didn't have to say anything. Yeah. It just speaks to the fact that we're not here just doing a thing. It's a real, it's an energy. It's yeah. a it's an energy that's flowing. And I'm honored to be able to pay tribute to the people who come before me in the city who are out here in the streets, like Petey Green. I remember as a youth going to Petey Green um, you know, <laughs> events and standing in line. I remember, you know, I'm I'm grateful to pay tribute to a Marvin Gaye, to um a Marion Barry and so on and Chuck Brown and so on and so forth. Uh, yes. Because I really wouldn't be able to do that in general with the type of music that I do without Matt stepping in and saying, okay, we're going to do homage to where you come from and where yeah. you were born because all of that has made me who I am. The roughness of DC, right. the side that people don't see, the tourists don't see, the yeah. roughness of DC, um, it's like the fire and the water that's come to my life that's created a certain fun funny balance and Matt was able to tap into that and bring that song as something that's for the youth that are right here the youth that are at the gas station right now begging right. for two dollars <laughs> to pump your right. gas 
for the right. girls who right now, you know, you know, that are looking for someone to come and be their bread and butter, but right. not realizing that they themselves are the gym. So, you know, I can go on and go on, but let's play. No, no, no. Thing. Look, I I just I just side I just side noted the K. I was like, she preaching, boy. <laughs> she, <laughs> she That's going. real though. That Let music real. talk because I don't like to preach when it comes to the music. Let the no, music but this is, this is this is all vibration. And I mean, and just even looking at this picture of the of the monument, you know, it's yeah. like people see that and they think that that's what this is. But then here you come with give a girl, give a young girl in the hood another chance to shine, give a boy in the hood another place to whatever. Uh you know, and then then you go into the, the the poverty aspect, the the dark part of this thing that we are living every day. You hear these sirens right right by us right now. You know what I mean? This is real. This is Washington D.C. You know, and you hear yes, it. Yes, yes. There's a but, there's a there's a in D.C. We're between gentrification and an all out war. We hear mm. gunshots, and then yeah. we hear construction um trucks within the same week. You know yeah. what I'm saying? So just realizing that the world never really has heard the stories of the people who come here, the indigenous people, not to mention, we talk about the African indigenous people. Many right. of us, oh. even my ancestors, mix with the native indigenous people oh, here, yeah. which you bring reference to in this thing to understand we're not just from Anacostia, who were the Anacostia people? Who were the Nakachtank right. people? Right. What exactly. role did they play in the well. survival of African people here? Because we, well. we had to help one another survive. We well. wouldn't be here if it wasn't for those roots. So, you know, again, at a go-go, nobody would want to hear this. So right. I can't say exactly. <laughs> exactly. I mean, I can't tell you how many times people say to me, oh, I didn't know you were in a go-go band. Yeah. Um, well, I might want to. I might want to get you to get your band to come come and play for my party or my event. And and you know what I have to tell them every time, like, yeah, no, we. I don't think you want that. And I'm just being <laughs> straight up, like, because you what you want, what you want is a party. You want a different type of thing. I don't think you guys want this, you know. And they don't understand. And then I'm like, no, listen to these songs, yeah, and listen. you'll understand. This is this is a conscious party, you know what I mean? And don't, don't get me wrong. I mean, we can let let our hair down and 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 have a little. That's what you need. You need love as our as our party song. Okay. When we play that live, it's over. Like it, it's it's a done deal. Everybody's going crazy. Everybody's like, okay, we done got through the whole preaching part. Now it's like like Bob Molly say, lively up yourself. Mm. So you need love as our lively up yourself. You know, and um, so we have we do have that element as well, um, but for the most part, it's, it is a conscious party, and and you know, and our music does have messages, and and we're dressing all sorts of things, you know, and and we just we're just gonna stay in that lane for now, you know, and so I'm just excited to have um, to finally be able to have this video that we can share with people because um, we, I, I, my goal is, our goal is to do a video for every song. <laughs> you know, this album might be 10 years old. We still gonna be rolling out video. I mean, it's timeless music. Yeah, it's, yeah, it's exactly. Timeless. And that's the, that's the difference. Like music is, is timeless, man. You can't, so we still gonna do, uh, uh, you need love is the next video that's coming up, and and so we still got we got more ground to cover because we're telling stories, and so um, and born again is is that's our story. That's the that's the story that tells it all. You know. All right, respect. Let's well, let's let us let us play it, and you know, uh, uh, like I told y'all earlier, you know, those of y'all listening, there's some familiar faces in here, so you know, y'all y'all get ready. Uh, I say party with a conscience. Y'all, y'all get ready that's to party right, with a conscience. Right. Hey, get you get get yeah. You if you want if you want to get your wine on and you you know whatever whatever. Hey, it's all good. I bet. You know. <laughs> Make it bigger.
key in the inner city Initiated by hating the uneducated Switching big gas tapes for me incarcerated Promises to speak your senses get emancipated Some folks just can't understand just why they are jaded Some folks just can't understand just why they are jaded Shout out to Black Tricity. You see, we had that yeah. Black Tricity up in there. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Baba Sangor. Baba Sangor. Yeah. I'm right, 100 grand. Lidge, big shout out to uh, um, to to my man, uh, God, I'm sorry, Jay Coleman with the murals. Yeah. Um, you know, like, yeah, big shout out to, to everybody. J uh, Jonah, the yeah. and his family, his crew. You know, the, the Neon Revolutionaries, that whole crew up in there. Jalal, who shot the video, give thanks to that. That youth put his foot in it. 
I agree. He put his foot in it. Give thanks. Give thanks. What, yeah. what did we just see, man? Y'all, break, break it, man. I saw a whole lot of murals, a lot of familiar sites in DC. Saw families vibing. Like, how did it all? How did it all come together? You know, just you got to help us, man. Please. <laughs> well, born again is really about our next generation. And my sister, you can hear me. You can hear. Me? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yes. So. You know, born again is about recognizing that the youth are the future. And for the youth to also remember that they come from somewhere. So it's about family. It's about community. And then arching over all of that is that community that we're kind of losing yeah. in the in the DC area and representing some landmarks that have been there for us since Sankofa Bookstore, Blue Nile. These are healing spaces. So we're kind of referencing them. Yeah, go seek them out, go learn. What is, what is Sankofa Books? Who is Haile Garima and Shirikiana? Right. You know, who is Baba Duku? Who is Baba Senghor Bay? Right. You know, these ones, I, I, I am another next generation. I didn't write the book on knowledge, wisdom, and understanding. Um, but the, I can point to you some of the ones who have been through the mud, who've come out and who are here leading us forward into yeah. a, Afri a sense of African self, yeah. African thoughts, I you know? Say, I say, and, I yeah, say, so I it's say. about all of that. And then it's also representing art in its many different facets, you know, visual arts, music art. It's not just the singers yeah. and plays of instrument that need to get the shine. Um, but the art that's around yeah. our streets is telling the yeah. stories of the people who are fading away in yeah. our cities. It's not just a DC thing. It's any inner city that was predominantly black. We're losing our spaces. This is the hieroglyphics of the modern day. You know, and so our artists have to be recognized. So big up Jay Coleman for the beautiful yeah. art pieces. Yeah. And, yeah, yeah. you know, but we're representing generations and generations. And, you know, sometimes things are rough when it comes down to family and finances and community and cost of living, but we still have to find joy. And so that's the other thing we wanted to represent is just, yeah, though we're living in a pandemic, though things are rough, though, you know, food costs and, and we don't have any security and we live on a plantation, we still have joy. We've always found that joy. You know, one can ever take it away from us, you know? So yeah, that's what Born yeah, Again yeah. is about. <laughs> I saw a lot of joy in there, you know, and shout out to Jalak too. Shout out to, you know, he really, he really did that. You know, it looked like, well, well, um, I know I probably asked this, but I I really want the audience to to understand or to overstand rather, like what were the what were the discussions like, you know, in terms of like picking the best sites, you know, even like handpicking the people to make cameos, because a lot of this, from what I see, couldn't have been by happenstance. It all looks like it came together so seamlessly, but it feels like. It was it, it was all in divine order. Like, what was that conversation like about the actual making of the video? It was in divine order because I wanted that thing shot twelve thousand years ago, man. Mm. That be like idea, that. man. Yeah, It'd I wanted like that, that thing to come out ages ago. Yeah, but everything. Yeah, everything. She's laughing. It, it, she's it really <laughs> is divine order. It really is divine order because life has been a challenge for yeah. all of us and we yeah. had our share, but give thanks we are still here. Yeah. And so when the music was released, there was so much going on in my life that yeah. I really couldn't give it the energy that it really required. And I didn't want Matt to have to go and try to do something because he really needed to put the video out. And I said, Matt, yes. just I, be patient with me and we're going to make something happen. Um, and then do. at the time that the the, the, the divine, the, the, the Ivine order of it is that at the time that the song came out, my son wasn't into film. He mm. was into watching films, mm. but the way life right. happens, right. He's a musician. He's an artist himself. He has music yeah. that's released. My son, he just turned 17 in January. Nomad, Jala Benjamin. 
Yeah. Wow. But he decided he, he really wants to not only deal with music production and music as an artist, he wants to bring visuals to it. And yeah, so he, he needed out. to, you know, he needed to express himself in out. a way. And so it just became um, organic when I Laid said, okay, Jala, this is what I have a vision to do. This is what I'd like to do. Here's some people that are already said they're available. There are many other ones who would be a part of it, but just the timing that I had, these are the ones that are available, but we need to have the, the youth, middle age, and the elders. And yeah. we need to, we're going to go through a journey through our city and capture the art that represents the city. And when he got the hands on the camera, he put his vision to it as Ooh. to how it should be shot, oh. how it should be put together. Oh, okay. And another thing that, that was organic is um, most of us know Malik, Dope Way Entertainment. Yes. So oh, Malik is, a, is like my nephew. Yeah. And I said, Malik, I need a dancer for the video. We really need to show that energy that we have here and we need this music we need to dance and so he said oh, i have the right i have someone for you so this brother links mm. listen to the song and in 48 hours showed up at this spot by the national Big up Father, link and, and malik did the born again dance organically yeah. you know so all of it has been just right. seeds planting and growing yeah. and yeah. i'm excited about it because i didn't plan it it was just okay. <laughs> That's, That's usually the, the best people. things, though. That's when yeah. the best things happen, you know, when you don't yeah. plan it. I, I think the most powerful part of all of this was how, like, just like you mentioned, the youth, you know, the ones that one that was behind the camera and one that brought in his friend to do the choreography for the music. Like, those were like the two parts that you highlighted. And it really speaks to like the power of youth in this whole thing. You know, I think that. That's just been my mindset, especially over the pandemic, just really focusing more on yeah. the youth than I have been. Cause like they, every day, like they surprise you and they show so much promise, you know? Yeah. Uh, like, please talk to me about, you know, the album itself, you know, um, as we all know that song and that video, the album shares its name, you know, and yeah. it's like, you know, what videos have come out and for people who don't know and what videos can we expect in the future? Uh, the last video we did before this one, before Born Again was After the Revolution. Okay. And, and that came out in the latter part, the end of 2019. Okay. Um, and that's a song written and sung by uh, our good brother, Dave Blackwell. And, you know, we've often heard the term of when the revolution comes and and all of that kind of stuff the revolution will not be televised and so we we always talk about this revolution and you know the question is well okay after the revolution like how 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 are we to move forward because you know the war is not just over just because just because, you know, one side kind of tipped off the other side in, during the revolution. And so, you know, that discussion about what do we need to do to like really move forward as a people, as, as members of the, of the human race, you know? Um, so it's, it's an amazing song. It's, it's all acoustic. Um, well, the guitar parts of it is acoustic. It's just a great feel. Um, Dave is like one of my favorite songwriters and, uh, and he's got additional works as well that he's doing, um, which is what, which is what I, I definitely love about that. Um, then the other, the other video we did was Ghost of Anacostia, which was uh, a song that I wrote and is a song, uh, telling the story about the displacement of the indigenous community of Nakatank in Southeast, Ward 8, east of the river, uh, we're talking 17th century and how they were displaced. And, um, you know, they, they had to flee and they took up refuge with the, the neighboring Piscataways down straight down 210. So um, it, was, it was even divine at how, how that came about because I knew I was going to do a song about this. I had already wrote the song 
and but I knew that I needed to get the blessing of the people first. You can't do a song about a, a people that you don't really specifically belong to. You can't do a song about a group of people and and put it out without getting their blessing. Like that's just the respectable thing to do is you got to get their blessing first because first of all, you need to know if your information is accurate. You know, forget about what all of the books say and all that kind of stuff, but um, you need to you need to check with them on that. And then you also need to just really really deal with them spirit to spirit, you know, and, and then they have to check you on that. And so I knew that I had to do that before anything. And I had put that on the radar, put it on the calendar, whatever. And um, I got introduced to uh, brother Sebi Medina Tayak of the Piscataway Nation. Just, it was divine. I met him through a mutual friend who was doing some other business ideas. And he told me that, um, he had this brother in his camp that was Piscataway. And I said, Piscat, what? You got what? You what? Like, um, can you introduce me to this guy? Like, can we? And he did. He set up a meeting. And I met with Sebi. And I told him the idea about the song and everything. And he was really, Sebi's a young guy, but he was really, he's really wise. Um, he was really impressed, you know, like, I think what probably the thing that impressed them the most was that it was one of we to do a song about he. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Um, it was one of we to do a song about he. And, you know, because I have I have a strong affinity for them as well. My great grandmother was full blooded uh, Catawba. Sorry, that's my that's that's my daughter. Um, but yeah, so. Sebi was wild by the lyrics. And he said, you know, hey man, let me ask you a question, man. Where'd you, where'd you get this information from? And I said, well, there's not much information about the Nakatank on uh, social media. There's not many books written about this particular group of people because they were they were small compared to like some of the other. Uh, neighboring groups, their cousins, you know, the, the Okichis, the, you know, a lot of these other, you know, Pamunkies, all of these people, Rappahannock, Tappahannock, all of the, the nations from the Chesapeake Inlet, okay, they're all related. So um, he wanted to know where I got my information from. And I told him I didn't really have many places where I could, you know, uh, I can get. He, I said they have a really great exhibit over at the uh, the American Museum of the American Indian at the Smithsonian, and he started laughing when I said that to him. He said, "Man," I said, "Yeah, oh yeah, the second floor, the second floor exhibit, which is about the the Chesapeake uh, uh, nations in. So that would include the Nakatank, the Anacostia, the Piscataway, all of those people." The Matter Woman's, all of these streets, they got, they done named streets after all of them, you know. But he laughed, he said, because, yo, man, um, so that the person that curated that exhibit on the second floor of the American Indian Museum, he said, it's my mom. Seriously? I was like, what? He said, yeah, my mother, wow. my mother did that. Yeah. Then he told me who his mother, beautiful people. Those people, amazing, amazing, man. Took me out to their, uh, they had a um, Piscataway uh, kind of like a uh, day of, of honoring the, the, the ancestors. Invited wow. me out there. Uh, Sebi introduced me to his uncle, the uh, chief, uh, chief Billy, you know, and like, Yo, because DC is, is shaped like a diamond, right? But we can't we can't just confine this culture just strictly to to those those inner linings. You know, you got to cross the line in PG County and some parts of Montgomery County where we yeah. breathe the exact same air. The trees are the same. The birds are the same. So why are we separating ourselves? Now I'm DMV, DC only, you know, like that kind of thing. I get it, but it's like, 
no nah, man the culture is still pretty much the same you know so um so yeah we we set up a really nice connection i was able to like invite some of our members from Frank Blue Congo down there on uh, Piscataway land. We did a, a photo shoot. It was the coldest day of 2018. <laughs> we went down on that land and we did a real nice photo shoot. Y'all remember that? <laughs> um, you know, but, but that's we- on the back of the CD. Yeah, yeah, that's on the back that's of the CD. CD. So yeah, I mean, and so yeah, we were, we were there, man. That's touchdown right there on, on that land man so like those people have really embraced us they continue to to this day they continue to create opportunities for us um and yeah and, and good opportunities might i add you know what i'm saying those are opportunities that align us crank with congo with those types of um platforms you know and that's that's where we are more so than the party I'm gonna to have to turn the party down, but something like this, yeah, we can because we actually have we have the music. This whole album is a soundtrack to just about any movement that you can think of, and I'm really proud and honored to say that I'm a part of this this collective that actually possesses a body of work that speaks you know, and that it speaks to the people and, it, and, and it's saying, it's saying something. Not to say that nobody else isn't, everybody, everybody's speaking, but this is our voice. That's all I'm saying, you know, and I'm really honored to, to be a part of that, you know, um, and that's, that's what it is, bro. Understood, overstood. Um, got one last question for y'all, and I really want you guys, each of y'all to answer for me, you know. Um, it's sort of a big question. And, you know, given what we've said here tonight about the importance of Crank Congo in the go-go industry, in the music industry at large, and just what we've seen with the video, the Born Again video, my question for y'all is, where do we go from here as a people? You know, now that we have this information, you know, where do we go as a people? What is it that you want the viewers out here to take from what they just saw tonight to implement in their lives and to spread among the people who they are with and who they love? Yeah, so if we go first, I, I would like for the people to really open up to this, open up to this message, open up to this visual, open up. Um, open up meaning just kill any type of fear that you may have internally that would, e that would even pull you away from this message in the first place. Open up, really open up. We have a lot of healing that needs to be done as a people. We have a lot of healing that needs to be done as a people. I'm getting like my brother Umar Johnson. I'm gonna repeat it a third time. <laughs> we have a lot of healing. <laughs> we have a lot of healing that we need to, 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 saying, to have as a people. Like we have to, we gotta get there. You know, we gotta get there, we gotta heal. And I think in order for us to do that, man, we really have to open up to be receptors of information and energy and, and 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 without having to just automatically block it all the time for no apparent reason you know and that's what's happening to a lot of us it's like we're just blocking it for no reason just because it wasn't damn why did not think of that yeah. i'm just gonna block it you know yeah. and we we have to really maybe communicate more about how we can uh, be proactive in helping others to really open up that way. That's a discussion. Um, because when we open up, then it allows us to see, and then we can, we can be fed and nurtured with, with the good stuff, you know? And I think that's a step because as, as we all know, man, we're, we're out here hurting each other in these streets, man. And for what? Ain't no dollars out there like that, like 
not, I mean, when I was coming up in the, listen, let me, that's a whole other story. <laughs> that's, read that in the book. All right. Let me, mm -hmm. let, let me not even go there, but I'm just saying like, I don't understand why, why we're out there. Um, yeah, I don't understand because not just the person that that's getting hit is affected. The whole community is getting affected. Pow, 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 pow. That sound, you know, that triggers things. Um, and that's a traumatic experience for a child to have to grow up in and around from, and it's a reality, yes, but it's still, it's still something that, you know, it, it, it can bring about all types of uh, toxic vibrations that can lead to sickness or whatever, whatever, whatever. So those of us that are toting these, 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 this iron, we should still at least be aware of this because this is, this is still our community. Exactly. You know what I'm saying? And so, yeah, man, we, we gotta be open, man. Like what, what is it, what's really worth taking someone's life? What's like, what is that? What is that? You know, you, you just can't live, you can't, live the rest of your life with i don't know having to 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 deal with what what whatever type of energy to transpire you know i, I it's it's just crazy man i saw uh, a few weeks ago i saw killing over at anacostia metro station and mm -hmm. not even bring this energy in but they showed the video and, and it was Two guys walking together on the plane. They hug, like I see. Hug, it. and after the hug, they dap. And then the one guy turns around after they do that whole exchange and just, just you know, like, wow, wow, you know. So we have a lot of healing to do because we still, everybody, we have to coexist with that type of behavior that's out there because it's real. You know, so we all, I think we all have to take part in, in this healing to some degree. I don't know what it looks like. We all have to take part in this healing um, because, you know, it's, just, it's we're, we're all going to get affected by it. You know, DC is a small city, so it's not common for two people to get into a gunfight together. And then they learn later on down the lines that they asked his cousins. Exactly. You know what I'm saying? Like, that's how small it is here. So, yeah, we, we really have to kind of open up and, and be open for that healing so that we can really connect the way that we're supposed to be connected. Respect. Give thanks. Appreciate that. Floor's open for our other two guests. I'm very excited to hear uh, your take. Uh, I guess I'll repeat it again. Cause I got a knack for saying long questions, but um, what is it that we can take away from this video? What is it that you want viewers to, to bring back with them and to give their friends and family? Ladies next. I'll give the floor to you, Angela. Give thanks. Whoa. I'll try to be short about it. Number one. It sounds so long, winded. <laughs> <laughs> no, I could talk that. My kids will tell you. <laughs> they want me to stop talking after my one hour lectures. But anyway, yeah, you know, um, Matt, you just spoke about really the essence here. Our youth are crying out. Their blood is being shed in the streets. Meanwhile, the world is focused on who's in the White House. So they don't really care about all of the people who live on the back side, on the east side, and the south side of the White House who are missing. You got young girls and boys who are still missing yeah. in the city. There's no monies being um, put towards the finding these young people. You have young people whose parents cannot work in this city because one out of every household, I'm sure, east of the river has someone who is in the penitentiary system. Yeah. And once you're in the system, 
You can't go and work in this city because the city is very federal. Or you're going to work for below minimum wage. And as we know, you can't afford to live here. So saying all that to say that tune in to the youth. Don't just blame them because they're robbing people and they're, I'm not condoning it. I'm saying if they're robbing people and killing people, we have to look at ourselves. Right. And say, what are we yes. going to or, or, or doing about it? And we have to also highlight people who are in the streets and in the classrooms, like Matt, like my brother, my brother Lazy K, like you, Rasem. Now COVID has made people realize the value of teachers. Let us slow down and put the children first, even if our youth don't go the way we want them to go, right? Do they feel the love there? Do they see the love or is it just words? This video is really talking to each generation differently and it's, it's, a, it's, it's, it's organic and holistic. So it's gonna speak different words to different people, but healing is the real word. We need to put the youth first in this city and across the world, because this is just not for DC, even though we're telling a story, a brief story, this is for the entire world. There's violence that are overtaking the street that is more than the pandemic of COVID. And it's young people that are the victims of this violence. And people are blaming the youth. Yes, they listen to certain right. music that, it, that encourages it. Yes, they're doing this. But who is going to stand up and say, I will be counted as one that will be here to help our youth heal, to understand that our African youth have post-traumatic slavery disorder, just like That's us. Right. That's right. And they need to know where to go. So this is why Sankofa Books is in the video. This is why Blue Nile yes. is in the video. Yes. Go there. You're going to find all the healing that you can get. <laughs> That's just a place. <laughs> you know? So That's yes, really, healing, really yes. love, family, yes. children, elders, oneness. That is what we're dealing with. You know? Yes. Yes. And that video says it all, you know. I mean, a lot of uh, a lot of the youth that you see in the video are Sister Isla's uh children. And I watched them, I watched them, I've seen them from like like little little. And to see them now and see how they grow and they how they've evolved. And you know, I, I just I gotta give it to my sister and 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 her king, you know, like for really, really truly bringing the youth up right like it takes a village i uh and i and I, i'm grateful that you said that but believe me i failed in so many ways <laughs> as a parent <laughs> but i'm still on a journey to learn to be a better parent but it is That's the right. village we couldn't That's do right. it without the village honestly yeah, yeah, yeah it is the whole village and you're a part of that village so yeah baba yeah. sam you know you had my youth in the class just, and, 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 you, and you had and you had mine in your class. <laughs> That's how we connected in the first Part place. Of the village. This is my, my man. My daughter was coming home in English class talking about she has to do an essay or a report on Eileen Selassie. And I'm like, oh, yeah. in English class? <laughs> Who is this guy? I love him, man. Let me let me meet this guy, you know? Yes, and, and you know, Baba Senghor is there. He's one of the ones always showing up for the youth. Oh, always yeah, yeah. there, yeah. telling you about your black chist tea. Yeah, and, yeah, you know, he has yeah. a smooth way of doing it where he's going to give you some powerful words to go away with, even if it's not long, long, long. So him being a part of it, though he didn't have a lot he said, but what he said was powerful. No, he, he he's <laughs> true. I mean, you know, it's people like, it's people like them. They have a large, uh, they have a large contribution to this as well. I tell Dira, Sister Dira Tompkins, this all the time, because Dira was responsible in the eighty throughout the eighties and nineties. Dira was responsible for bringing a lot of top-notch reggae artists to the D.C. area. Burning Spear, mm. uh, Anasio Fontaine. Mm. I mean, you name it, like, and this was during a time when, like, I was, like, coming into my eyes at that time and, and really checking for the roots and all of, the, all of that. And, like, so 
Dara, I mean, we had venues, but Dara was through her connect and with the Smithsonian, she was bringing a lot of artists over here. And that, that, that gave the opportunity for people like myself to really see these people in the flesh and to experience their magic, wow. you know, and I always, I always give her a big up, you know, about her being a contributor to that. So it's people like that, that, um, that are around and, and, and they, you, you, you know, they just paved the way, man. They paved the way and you gotta, there's, there's many more. You just, you gotta give them props that have happened. Um, yeah, even in the video, we have people of different uh, religions. You have Minister Angel Griggs, who's also a background singer. Right, and she's right. also, you know, so we just, there's there's energy flowing through the video that it'll take lo a lot of time for us to feel it out. And again, I didn't write the script for it. It's really the most high. <laughs> so, the you most know, high energy, yeah. Yeah, it's, it's definitely a most high energy. Yeah, yeah, you're right. Like those spiritual roads, you have, have a lot of different things in there, you know. You got the you got the 21st century uh hoodoo conjure man up in there. <laughs> <I'm> just <kidding. laughs> But yes, yeah, it's, it's all present, man. Ross Lidge is up in there, you know. Um so yeah, man, we just want everybody to really take it, open up to it and share it. Um so that we continue to get this this message across you know we just we just want people to share it and watch it as many times as you like i mean the first time i saw it after the edit and everything i i cried i'm not even gonna lie i shed i shed a tear because yeah i now see this story i can see it and um you know just seeing my sister and they they just did it right her son her youngest son her youngest child judah hmm. I haven't seen Judah in a while, but Judah always, when you see Judah, Judah got him face screwed up. Judah always screwed up him face so, you know, like, and I see Judah in this video. I don't see him every day like she does, but I see Judah in this video. He's got this big smile on his face and he's like, like, oh, he's got the bass in his hand. I'm like, what? And he's, he's like tall and he's, he's grown so much yeah. now. And I'm like, yes. That's what I'm talking about. That's what I'm talking about. You know, her daughters, Aya and Ayana, right? They and I mean, like, I haven't yep. seen them in a while, and like, they're like, whoa, you know. Yeah, and there's so, another. There's a lot of quiet thunders. Also, one of our mothers in the community who has been leading the homeschool movement. Oh yeah. Who's yeah. also leading people home. She's in Afghana right now, Mama Monica yeah. and her sons who are powerful youth on the drum, Zion and Ayende, who are students of Baba Mahiri. It's just a lot of okay. energy there, you yeah. know, that is subliminal and subconscious, but it's very much right there, you know? Uh, so Baba, it's, Mah Baba Mahiri yeah. gotta give a shout out to him because you know, uh, African drummer, uh, West African style, Jim Bay, extraordinaire, Jun Jun. Baba, uh, Baba Mahiri also taught at the school with, with, with Baba Ra Sam, where my daughter was. So my daughter took drum lessons from him and she would come home with like all A's in that class. Cause yeah. you know, um, yeah, man. So, you know, just, just, just honor to like have our youth, man, come through that system right there. That's a blessing. And uh, that's what this is about, man. Born again. That's, that's it. This whole collective, man. You know, I, I ran into on my way here, I ran into one of my former students on the street. Uh, and I was going in the opposite direction and I had to do a U-turn to turn around and pull over. <laughs> you know, and I honked the horn. I said, hola, familia, como esta? You know, and, oh, senor Mateo, you know? And they <laughs> came, no, no, stay, stay, we gonna come. You know, and they came across the street and man, it was like, it was beautiful. Right on, on 14th and Otis up oh, there. Oh, wow. And I hadn't seen them in years, but it was beautiful seeing them and seeing Lily, the oldest daughter, she's in her senior year in college right now at UDC and people are just doing it. And I'm just like, I only, I only have two biolo biological daughters, children. Yeah. But I got 
I got tons of sons and daughters, man, all over the DMV. People that I've that's what teaching does, man. Exactly. 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 I got youngins that I see they they may or may not be doing so good at the time. I see them, yo, what's good? What's up? You all right? Come talk to me. Like what you need. You need, you know, you need what? You need five dollars? Like, what's up, man? Like, what's what's going on? Like, don't let me see your ass out here doing that, you know, exactly. <laughs> you know, like a real responsibility. And um, I love those relationships that I can maintain with them. Exactly. Baba Keith. Brother, when you when you create with people who walk the walk and talk the talk, less talk is sometimes needed. So for me, <laughs> I contribute this, man. We are all examples whether or not we're doing it on purpose or not. Hmm. So my contribution is this. Be conscious of who you are as a vibration and a, as a reflection of God to youth and the people around you. Let not you be the one the disturber. Right. Let not you be the one who starts the ting ting. Ting ting. So, you know, my, my point of view to not be redundant because you cannot be in this group. <laughs> it has been said. <laughs> Ah. Yeah. Uh, talk, uh, uh, before we wrap up where where can we find more information about crank with congo where can we you know yeah you can uh, uh first and foremost go to uh the website cranklucongo.com that's c-r-a-n-k-l-u-k-o-n-g-o dot com so and then with those those words crank and then lu congo you can find us on Instagram, Twitter, Facebook, um, just to keep keep posted. You know, we're not really actively playing right now. Uh, we're just really still trying to circulate this good music that we spent so long trying to create and really allow that to be a part of many soundtracks that are that are evolving. So, um, yeah, we'll, but you know, when the price is right, we'll come out and play for you. <laughs> no, that's right. No, that's right. We'll come out and play, we'll get, you know, but yeah, for the most part, we're just building and and also for the proper cause. I think you know yeah. what's important for a group like this, man. You know, we, we, me and Matt sometimes get together and just watch how our ancestors did it. Oh, my god, and this I dude. Think, I think no, I'm not gonna go down that documentary road, buff, yo. We just like spend hours watching documentaries, man. On no, good but stuff. see, there's nothing too much new under the sun, and I think we're right. starting to miss the sun. That's mm. right. That's right. That's right. And that's so why we have something's missing. And we're whether we're not allowing it, like you all talked about the blockage. You know, check out what we're blocking. Yeah. Are yeah. We, that's we, real. Are we blocking good word and positive vibes here? Yeah. Oh no, we don't want to block that. Yeah. Or or do we? So we've got to really get to the bottom of what it is we want again. And there's always an opportunity to do that. Yeah, right on. Right on. With that being said, um Crank Congo, y'all. I, I really appreciate this reasoning, y'all. You know, my man. Come on, come on, come on, come on, come on. Come on. Okay. Come yeah. on. Yeah. One to <laughs> twin flowers. Activate. <laughs> hey. oh, yeah. Oh, y'all got it, man. You know, more to come. And the next time I got a video, you know, let's do it again. Seriously. Well, so well, thank, you know. thank, thank you so much, Baba, for just being uh, available and present and, and uh, really believing in us enough to highlight us the way that you have been. Like, so major salute to you man yes, major brother. salute thanks, to you. yes brother thanks um, for giving us the time and Appreciate so we, yeah we definitely want to continue to just stay in line and and continue to to do the work together and, and build together and we really appreciate that man all right likewise and give thanks for using your platforms because you don't have to give thanks for using your platform instead of for uplifting the people. You don't get paid to do this. And so I want to just say, we, I appreciate of it. And I know our children, whether they know it or not, will always have you in their memory banks as the one who encouraged writing, encouraged mm. scholarliness, encouraged Pan-African centeredness. And we give thanks 
That's uh, right. Baba. Yes, and right. give thanks to all of the eyes. You know, Craig Lu Congo is like a, it is a movement to me. It's not necessarily like how someone would say it's a, it's a musical group because it could be so many different people that yeah. move into the Craig yeah. Congo space. But there's an energy that I pray will live on. I know will live on forever yeah. and we hope that it's the youngest ones that are amongst us that take that energy and oh, carry man. it on yes. yes so we give thanks yes, yes. Give thanks. definitely that well said <laughs> yes yeah this this is where we leave off uh want to thank y'all once again and those of y'all who are out there listening this is crank lucongo sam pk collins rise sam baba ploquia baba sam whatever you want to call me and you know y'all have a good night Get that EP, listen to Born Again, play the video over and over again, y'all. Right. And you could you could go to uh to Crank Blue Congo. Just type in Crank Blue Congo Born Again video, um, and it'll it'll come up. So, you know, get it, share it, subscribe, let us know what you think. You know, we we definitely love to hear what y'all think about it and and you know, get some feedback as well. Yeah, so, yeah, for sure. So stay in touch with us and we'll definitely stay in touch with you for sure. Much love, family. We'll All see right. you sooner or later. Peace, everybody. Yes. Peace. Bye. Bye. All right.